Anything you'd add to capital allocation right now, Andy? Yeah, real quick, just as far as gold is concerned, that's the the illusion. You know, Jay, you and I both have a long history in this industry, a um, lot longer than most people. And to think gold at 2400 would, if someone told you when you were watching gold at 400 that it would be six times higher and would be hardly noticed at all by the public, you'd say, I'll bet you everything that isn't true. But it is. And it's because instant gratification is not fast enough for, for people in the West because of Bitcoin, because of NVIDIA, because of Apple. But here's the interesting thing. Let's take Bitcoin out of the equation. OK, it started from zero. It did its thing. But since 2000, gold has outperformed every single traditional asset, including the S&P 500 with dividends reinvested, which is about nine and a half percent compounding. Gold is nine point nine percent compounding. It is out performed everything. It has doubled the performance of the 10-year treasury. It is the tortoise, not the hare. And it is the people watching the race that say the tortoise, tortoise doesn't do a damn thing, but it wins the race. Those same people are making the, I would say, unastute comment of that gold doesn't do anything. Quite to the contrary, it does. And it is because criminal enterprises like the LBMA are allowed to trade in gold uh, uh, 200 million ounces per day. Now they say they're only doing 20 million ounces per day, but they admit that their settlement numbers are 10 times understated because they only post the final settlement numbers, not all the trades that take you to get there. So they're trading 200 million ounces of gold per day and, and using the same logic in silver, almost 3 billion ounces of silver per day, which is three and a half times annual global mine supply per day. Where on the COMEX, they can rehypothecate the price of gold and silver, rehypothecate those contracts many hundreds of percent uh, uh, over what is actually available for delivery. The distortions created by the Western paper markets are being exploited by the countries around the world who are using it to their advantage. And for a moment, if you think they don't know it, I got a bridge to sell you. They just developed the BRICS grain exchange. And the head of the BRICS grain exchange said, you know, we produce more wheat than the West does. We consume just as much, yet we have no control over the price. It's all priced on the COMEX. That's going to change, he said, when the BRICS grain exchange comes about. The head of the uh, the Shanghai Gold Exchange said when the Chinese are allowed to speak at the gold table, he said this in 2015, the real price of gold will be observed. They know exactly what the West has been doing by holding back the price of commodities to accentuate the value of a bond market and a currency market that were illusionary. <clears throat> and they know that. And they're using it against us by using that leverage to stand for delivery. Real quick break here, guys. If you are a mining investor, you are without question familiar with the Golden Triangle region in British Columbia. This is one of the most prolific mining regions in the world due to its vast deposits of gold, silver, and copper. Now, for the last four years, Dolly Varden Silver has been busy expanding their high-grade silver deposit in the triangle. And they are backed by some of the smartest investors in the silver business, including the legendary Eric Sprott, Hecla Mining, US Global Investors, Fidelity, Delbrook Capital, Sprott Resource Corp, and more. If you are curious why the smartest money in the silver business is cozying up to Dolly Varden Silver, then hit the link beneath this video. The standing of delivery. The first step is to drain all of the Western exchanges. The second step will be, and it's just happened, the Shanghai Gold Exchange, the, the combined volume in the Shanghai Gold Exchange and Futures Exchange is up 200% in the last 100 days. It's now has a greater cumulative volume than the COMEX does, making it number two on the planet after the LBMA. The first step is to drain the Western exchanges slowly and methodically, not too fast, but slow enough so they can milk as much out of the system as they can. The second step would be to move the price setting mechanisms to Dubai, to Moscow, to Beijing, where they are real. They are not uh, levered to the degree that they are in London or the West. And the third step is to jack the prices of mining shares through the damn roof, because these assets are depleting. These assets are not they're not commodities, they're strategic. And the rest of the world knows that. And they are accumulating what is strategic assets. If you believe Zoltan Pozar, as I do, that Bretton, Bretton Woods won when we took over for the pound sterling. 
That ended in 1971. Bretton Woods, too, loosely when we became the petrodollar. You could argue that just ended a few weeks ago. Uh, I mean, not completely, but the, the severing of that exclusivity is over. Bretton Woods, three. He who's got the commodities wins. It's always been he who's got the gold. Well, that, too. But like the Chinese buying the London Metals Exchange, all the base metals, warehousing now or building warehouses to warehouse those base metals in Lo in China that are traded in London, striking deals all around the world with their Belt Road and the bricks in, in, in resource-rich, underdeveloped countries. They know where we're going and they're playing us. They are using the idiocy of the U.S. and the Canadian governments that suppress the hell out of the price of gold, the Western governments and the, the, the U.K., to to maintain this illusion of, of Western prosperity, they're using it against us. And so, yes, there is no better place to park your money than in pure wealth, gold and silver. And as far as an investment is concerned, I don't see a better one even remotely close than these underloved, underappreciated uh, mining shares that when the public wakes up, if you are our three, all three of us have a mutual friend in Rick Rule. Rick will tell you, if you go from the Harvard Endowment Fund all the way down to Joe and Jane's six pack, as he always says, one half of 1% allocation to metals and mine, mining shares, make that 5% or 10%. You're talking a five or a 10 or a 20 fold increase in demand. You'll make more money in an allocation of mining shares than you ever dreamed of making in NVIDIA or in Bitcoin or any of these things because the world is moving to a new system, one that has lost trust and confidence in the fiat experiment. And we are moving to a system, as Zoltan Pozar says, Bretton Woods 3, one based on commodities and transparency a la blockchain. Blockchain and commodities and what better place to do it than after you have your physical allocation to buy quality mining shares uh, in, in, you know, and listen to guys uh, like, you know, all the great guys at Rick's show or, or Sean here, who's telling you how important owning mining shares really is. And it's true because the world is shifting that way. And yet the people in the West, they're asleep at the switch. When they finally wake up, they will catapult not only the physical price of metals, but the mining shares to levels that people would think are crazy. And I've seen it before. Um, early in the days, in one mining share that I bought, I talked about this with Sean. I bought a stock for six cents. It was called Western Copper. I put $9,000 in it. It changed its name to Western Silver, which changed its name to Glam or got bought by Glamis and got bought by Gold Corp. And I turned $9,000 into almost $750,000. And that will happen to average people who allocate to mining shares because I believe this is a once in a generational move from from fiat and opaque debt promises to to transparency and commodities. And if it's becoming that hard to get metal across the globe with virtually no American participation, when they wake up, the need for quality mining shares is extraordinary. So, yeah, that's what I would add to it. And it's not salesmanship. It's it's not hyperbole. I believe it in my soul that it's as important as anything and it's in the ground and it's needed to move forward. Couldn't think of a better place to put my money.